morning. This is Susan Campfield with SueStampfield.com. I hope you're doing well today. It's a beautiful Saturday morning here in Minnesota. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera and we're going to make a fun fold card today. Once again, we're going to be using the fabulous uh, Pansy uh, patch bundle in the Pansy dies. So uh, this time we'll be using some different dies than we did in the previous videos. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera and we'll get started. You're going to see my ceiling for just a moment while I get set in my stand, so bear with me. There we go. And I see Mary's here. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to clip this right into the stand. There we go. Hopefully everything is good and uh, just drop me a message if you if the sound is okay I believe I have sorted my sound issues we got that figured out in the last video and uh, just want to verify that so uh, let me know if uh, sound is good how's everyone doing today today we're going to be making a vertical easel card so it looks like a standard card but when you open it you see that the um, center is scored and so I've got some dirt on here, there we go. And it folds and there's a little uh, kickstand, I like to call it, on the inside that holds it up. Oh good, everyone says the sound is good. Thanks Connie, thanks Kathy. So this little piece has popped up on a dimensional and it just props open the front of the card so the recipient can sit it on a desk on a mantle and display your beautiful artwork. Um, but it opens like a normal card and there's plenty of room to write or to stamp your sentiment or whatever. So we're gonna make this card today. We're gonna change it up a little bit. Uh, I just got um, some a whole bunch of new goodies from the new catalog. The new catalog went live on Tuesday and I got a lot of, in fact, I got all of the embossing folders except for one, which will be coming. Um, and so at the end of this video, I'm excited to share with you all of the embossing folders, what they look like embossed. I think it's a little bit hard to tell in the catalog, although I think they did a really good job this time um, with showing those embossing folders. But on this one, I used... Um, an embossing folder that carried over from the last one, uh, from the last catalog, but we're gonna change it up today and we're gonna use a new folder and I'm hoping you will help me pick uh, which folder that we're gonna use. Uh, I've got two options that I thought both looked good, so I would love your input. We're also gonna change up the colors just a little bit on this card, just for something different, different. Um, I did wanna let you know that the Pansy Petals Suite um, this item number is not orderable right now. And the reason is because one of the items that comes in that sweet collection, these little bumblebee um, embellishments, are on back order. And so um, you can certainly order the bundle. You'll still get your 10% savings. Um, you can order the paper. You can order everything. It's just the little bumblebee trinkets that you'll have to wait on. So a couple of my customers were confused by that. They wanted to order this right away when the catalog went live. Um, just know that you can order it. You just need to put the items in individually. So you'd put in the bundle and you'd put in the designer paper. And then I will uh, just alert me and I'll, that you're interested in the, if you're interested in the trinkets and I will let you know. So we're going to get started here with our easel fold card. This is uh, a vertical easel and it's super easy, but it looks like super fancy and like, you know, it's it was all complicated and everything, but it is unbelievably easy. Now I did do a, another version of this uh, back in, gosh, was it April maybe? Um, with the Butterfly Brilliance bundle. Um, and the specialty birch, birch paper. Now this birch paper is retired and as are the stitch nested dies, but this was the same, um, the same general fold idea. So we're just changing it up today and we're using it with the pansy dies and the pansy stamp set. And a couple people have been a little intimidated by this pansy stamp set. I have, um, and by the dies and how those go together. I have several videos that you can check out right here on my channel showing you how to build the pansies um, with the dies and how to stamp them with the dies. I've also been sharing some charts um, on my 
in my weekly project sheets that I send out when on how those go together. So there are videos up on how to do use the dies for this fun fold card. Um, there's videos up on how to use the paper and die cut it with this angle fold card. And I have a video up on how to use the stamps um, to build your pansies with this card. And uh, if you want to drop... Um, in the, in the description, there is a link to my weekly project sheets. You're welcome to join in on that. I will be sending this one out um, in the next uh, project sheet, which will go out the middle of this week. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I also, in this next one, I'm also going to drop in the links to all of the project sheets for these cards uh, because I've had a lot of people joining on that newsletter and they missed that um, originally. So... All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, the colors on this particular uh, card, this version, which we are gonna change up a little bit today, is one of the in colors, and that is Fresh Freesia, and then it's paired with the Soft Sea Foam, which is from our regular line. And these are the in colors. Um, if you're a member of my Sue Stampfield Facebook group, we've been having a lot of fun all week uh, focusing on these in colors and really color in general and just having a lot of fun. Uh, would love for you to join my uh, Facebook community at Sue, uh, it's a Sue Stampfield Facebook group. You can search it out, request to join, and I'd be happy to add your membership in. So we're going to go ahead and start creating. So I'm going to bring in my scoring tool and I'm going to show you, first of all, how we're going to score our card. It's so easy, you guys. It's so easy. I love easy. <laughs> I like it when it looks fancy, but in, in secret, it's super easy. All right, so our card base here is five and a half by eight and a half, and we are going to be scoring that at two and an eighth and four and a quarter. So um, just to help me, because I get a little nervous when I'm on a video, <clears throat> I put my markers in place so that he didn't mess it up. So I have this marker at two and an eighth, and I'm going to score. And I have this marker at two and a quarter, and I'm going to score. And that's it. Scoring is now completed. Put that away. Let's just do some folding here and get our bone folder. Next up, we're going to decide on our embossing folder. So this is where I need you to, um, to vote. <laughs> All right, so here is our card. You can see how easy that is. That just, I just scored, uh, creased the score there so that it's coming out into a mountain fold um, so that it can pop open. And we'll just put our little uh, prop right there to keep it open, our little kickstand. So now we want to do our embossed panels. Our embossed panels are, where'd my little paper go? Here it is. Our embossed panels are two inches by five and a quarter, and you do need two of those. So let's make some decisions. Now, again, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you all of the new embossing folders, except for one, at, which I don't have yet, and because um, it wasn't available when I ordered. And then, but right now, I'm gonna just show you two of them because these are the two that we need to decide on. So decisions, decisions, help me design today. Um, all right, so this first one is so pretty, you guys, oh my gosh. Okay, this one is called pretty flowers and it is very much pretty flowers so it's just as described absolutely love it this is a standard folder just needs two plates no specialty plates it's just not a 3d it's a regular but holy cow look how deeply um, etched that design is um, what a deep um, impression you get when you emboss with that and what I love about this one is you can actually Either side looks good, right? So this is the one side, and then the other side, the flowers kind of come up. So here they're sort of insets. Uh, you know, there's not, not a wrong answer here. And so you can just emboss your piece that whatever size you need it, and then you can decide which side you want. So that's our first option, the pretty flowers embossing folder. Our second option is this set of embossing folders. This is the um, checks and dots. It's a two pack. These again are standard folders, just need a regular uh, two uh, cutting plates to emboss them. And these are the checks and these are the dots. And 
Let me show you what they look like when they're done. So we've got the polka dots and the checks. So let's bring in our card and we're gonna kind of slip this behind and see what we think, okay? So this is what the polka dots are going to look like, which is kind of cute because you get the gingham and the polka dots. Um, and this is what the checks would look like. We've got gingham and checks. And then this is what the pretty flowers looks like on that side. And, you know, remember that we're not going to see that part. So um, that's going to add a lot of texture to our card. Or we could also use the back side of the pretty flowers. So, so I'm going to have you vote. I've seen two votes so far. Keep them coming. Anyone else have an opinion? Okay, I've got two all for the same. Give it one more minute here while you're voting. I, I'm afraid to look away. Okay, I've got I've got four. All right, I agree with you. We're gonna go with the polka dots, but don't worry. Um, I have a piece of these other two. Well, I don't know if I did this one. So, yep, everyone's saying polka dots. I think polka dots would be super cute. Let's try it out and we'll see what we think. All right, so we've got our piece here. Um, we've got our polka dots. I, you know what, I pre-did all of our choices um, so that just to save time. So are you guys okay with that? Um, hopefully you know how to emboss. I do have it in some of my other videos. So I'm gonna skip over that because we are gonna do some die cutting in a little bit. I die cut some of the things ahead of time, but a couple I wanted to show you. So um, let's go ahead and take our polka dots here and we're gonna just adhere those two panels to the front of our card. And you guys, don't let me forget to show you all the other folders. I actually put, <laughs> I put a really bright orange post-it note on my um, my phone stand here in the hopes that when I, uh, that I don't forget to do it, but <clears throat> I still might. So give me a shout out if I forget that. So we're gonna take our, um, our, our seal adhesive here. Let me just get it going. Just run some adhesive down that panel. Again, that panel is two by five and a quarter. If you recall, we scored this at two and an eighth. So we're gonna have a skinny border on the two sides and a little bit bigger border on the top and bottom. All right, so we've got our two panels. Right there. All right, so there we have our panels. And I will, um, I'll see if I can get uh, an, versions done with the other two choices of embossing folders to put in this week's project sheets, just so you can see what that would look like too. Just so we know our options. All right, so we're going to um, grab our next set. Now I did use another set of dies for this particular card. This particular card lends itself Oops, let's put that in a busting folder away. We don't need that one. To really well to nesting dies. And we have a fabulous new set of dies that I I cannot get enough of. I've been using them, I think, on <laughs> not every card, but pretty dang close. Um, so these are the scalloped contour dies. They're available as a bundle with the color and contour stamp set, which is right here. And I'll be featuring that on a future video, probably next Saturdays, but we'll see. It might be the Saturday after. Uh, might even be Tuesdays. I don't know, but it's coming up soon. Um, so these cut out the stamps. The rest of these dies are just to decorate, um, you know, or to do shapes, right? So this one is an edge die that does a fancy edge. The ones we're using today are the second from largest and the second up from smallest. They're my favorites. Well, actually this one's super nice too. Okay, and I love that. Okay, all right, I love them all. All right, I don't have a favorite. Shouldn't have favorites, right? Don't want any dye to feel left out. So I actually already cut these out. Let me see if I can find where I put them. Aha, they're right where they should be, that's good. 
All right, so I went ahead and cut them out so you can see this gorgeous uh, scallop, and then it does a little polka dot in there. And so the size of paper I cut this out of, you can see the leftover bit. If you're a paper saver and you want to get pretty darn close, uh, but give enough wiggle room, um, three and a half by four and three quarters worked really well. So pull that off because we're going to use this guy. And then this is the other one that I cut. This one is really unique, and I, I love it. In fact, I saw <laughs> on a Stampin' Up! Leaders uh, Facebook group, somebody thought it was a flawed die because it actually cuts a slit almost all the way around. The slit is divided by some little dots, and I really love that little detail because if you're putting a color behind that, just a little of the color peeks through that little slot. Um, you can also weave things behind like a piece of ribbon. Um, it's, it's super cool. So uh, we're using this one. And just in case you were wondering on the paper size for this one, I did two and a quarter by three and a half. Again, I left myself a fair amount of wiggle room in case it shifted on me. Um, I suppose you could get even tighter, but that would be a little risky <laughs> for me anyway. So those are the sizes that I use for, to cut those dies. And I'm going to pop them right back in their sleeve here so that I don't lose anything. That's my goal. Don't lose any dies today. All right, so we have our panel and you can see we're gonna add some designer paper to that. The designer paper I'm using today is the uh, Pansy Petals Designer Series paper. And this is cut at two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. And when you cut it that size, it will perfectly layer inside those little polka dots. So let's go ahead and add some adhesive and adhere that to our pretty scallop frame. There we go. So we've got that pretty gingham on there. The pansy petal paper is gorgeous. And of course you can die cut a bunch of flowers out of some of the patterns. Um, and it also has um, a pale papaya um, gingham check in there as well. And I think there's one other as well. Okay, so we're building our card here. Oh my gosh, look how cute. The gingham with the polka dots. You guys are on it. I love your choice. Um, again, I think the checks would have been fun too. Um, not a bad choice there, but we this is going to be super cute. So thanks for helping me with that. All right, we have, um, we've got a lot of our pieces. We're ready for some flowers, right? So first I'm actually going to stamp the flower on the inside here. Am I doing that first? Yeah, I'll do that first. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna bring in my little stamping mat here and I've got my stamps. Paper might be a good choice. Um, The paper I was going to use has vanished, so I will grab this piece of paper. Seriously, it was right there. What did I do with it? All right, we'll use this. That's okay. This was an extra panel in case I did emboss the panels and we didn't do that, so we have this available. So let's use this one. So now we get to decide on color. So for this particular version, I used Fresh Freesia. So how did I get the light and the dark? So the Fresh Freesia, um, I stamped this full, oh, there we go. Is that really fuzzy? Okay, there we go. That's full strength ink there. The, the solid one, I stamped on a scrap paper first to get a lighter version and then uh, stamped it. So we're gonna add the little middle um, to this uh, little pansy. It also looks like a viola. I think those are also called Johnny Jump Ups maybe. Um, we're going to add that middle detail um, for just a little more pop in there. So I'm going to change up the colors though. Oh, hey, look, there's the paper setting, sitting on my ink pads because that's where I thought I would need it, which, you know, it was a good idea, but, a, but flawed execution, I guess, right? All right, so here is my favorite way to stamp the pansies. These are meant to 
stamp on top of each other and be lined up. I have used the Stamparatus for that, and you can see that in my other video about stamping these. Um, but this time I'm not using that because I'm just making one card. So I'm going to go with Highland Heather. And I prefer, it's easier for my poor eyesight if I stamp the darkest portion, the detail portion, first. I know that seems a little weird, but when I stamp that first, let's go with Fresh Freesia here. And I'm going to ink up my Fresh Freesia. Now, I actually tried this out beforehand, and when I stamped the Fresh Freesia full strength for the background, I didn't care for it. Um, I'll, uh, I, <clears throat> I'll show you here. So this is the full strength Fresh Freesia. This one is Highland Heather full strength for the detail, and then I stamped off Highland Heather for the inside. We're going to try the Highland Heather full strength like we did here, but we're going to try Fresh Freesia stamped off for the inside layer. Let's see if we like it. So because I did that darker detail, I'm able to hover right over here and perfectly line up the solid one with that um, darker detail. If I had done it the other way, it's just harder for me to line it up. So this is my preferred method. You you know, go with what works for you. So I, I think that's more much more attractive to stamp it off than the full strength. Okay. I just saw a message pop up um, from somebody in the UK, and I think she had a question, but it disappeared before I could see her question. So I will answer that after the live, but if anyone that else that is watching um, has an answer to her question, please go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up the little detail in the Highland Heather, and I'm going to stamp that full strength right there. So there we have our pansy. So we can let's compare it to the one in here. This one is just fresh freesia, and this one is fresh freesia with the Highland Heather, because we're going to be adding some Highland Heather to this one. So for my leaf, I'm also going to, and don't worry about the middle, we're going to add a pretty gem in the middle, because, you know, we're all about the pretty gems, right? We're going to grab our Garden Green ink pad. We're going to change up the green. For this card, I use the Soft Sea Foam. For the leaf detail, I stamped off the soft sea foam for the background part, and for the detail part, I did it full strength. This one, I think I actually grabbed a different leaf. It's There's two leaves in the set, so let's see what this one looks like. We're going to start with our full strength garden green. Wow, that's dark. And then we're going to ink up our detail stamp and stamp that off. And then we're going to hover right over again and line it up and stamp. And there we have our garden green ink, uh, garden green leaf. All right, so we're ready to die cut that out. Just going to shove my dirty stamps over. I'll clean them later, probably. No, I will. Honest. All right, so we have this. We're ready to die cut this out, but we also want to die cut our pansy for the front. Um, we're going to change it up a little bit. Um, with the pansy, because of the skinny, skinny stem, I actually like to use the adhesive sheets. Um, I think it's much easier personally for me. So let me show you. And I did cover how to use the adhesive sheets in the video where I showed how to build the dies. Stalling while I try to find that card because I just showed it to you. Here it is right here. Um, I did cover how to use these, but just as a quick little recap here, these are the adhesive sheets. When you peel them back, this part is all sticky, so you just stick this on your cardstock. So here's one I've cut down to, um, I believe that's four inches by two, and then I have a piece of cardstock here that's two and an eighth by four and a quarter, because I wanted a little bit of extra wiggle room to get my adhesive sheet on. You see I went a little crooked there, so I had that extra room to, to cover. Now I can die cut whatever I want out of here, peel the backing off, and it's sticky. So that's just a little recap on how to use adhesive sheets. All right, so let's put that away, and let's bring in our die cutting machine here.
don't forget, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you all the new folders. Don't let me forget to show you all the new folders. All right, so we have these cute little things here. We're going to go to our pansy dies, and we're going to just find the matching dies to cut those out. Excellent. This is where uh, post-it notes are my friend. So I'm going to lay my die where I want it to be. And of course it moved on me, which is why I should have put the post-it note down. Alright, so... You know, I got these post-it notes because when uh, customers order from me or people uh, join my team to get their own discount on their stamp supplies, I send them some hand-stamped cards, and I did these to, you know, uh, put a little note for them in it, but I, I think I use them more on these videos for die cutting. I use them for both, I guess. They're multi-purpose. All right, now we're going to put our plate on. We've got those, those sticky notes holding our die in place. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Not too worried about it because it's layered uh, with a white background behind it. So if um, they move on me and I get a little extra white showing, I'm not going to worry about it. So, all right, so we've got that done. Peel that back, and we've got our fun little pansy. Oh, it's going to be so cute when we get that gem, you guys. I can't wait. Can't even wait to stick that gem on it. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the pansy stem. I actually pre-cut, but I want to show you how I did it. So let me grab my little chart here to just refresh your memory on how what dyes you want to use to cut this um, it's a pansy bud, I guess I would call it. And actually, I went for a walk yesterday, and there were a lot of violets popping out because it's spring here. And there was uh, the violets before they open uh, do the same kind of thing. So I actually thought, wow, that actually could be a violet too. So these are the dies that you need to, um, to cut these pieces. That's a part of the pansy dies. I'm going to flip them over so you can see that they add some in, um, embossing. So you get all that detail when you die cut them. Now this sample is uh, Gorgeous Grape, Highland Heather, and Garden Green. So for this particular one, again, I did the soft sea foam, the uh, fresh freesia, and white for that flower. You can see I have my pieces here with the adhesive sheet on the back. I don't know if that shows up. Um, and I just cut those out of there. Um, today we're going to change it up. Now, I wouldn't even have had to put adhesive sheet on the back, but I did. I don't know why, but it made it easy to stick it together. So we're going to change things up today. Again, I would love your opinion. I did two versions of this flower. Um, so one version, this is going to add a little more pop to our card. This one is the white with Highland Heather, Garden Green Stem. This one is the Fresh Freesia with the Highland Heather and the Garden Green Stem. I don't think there's a bad choice, so let me know if you want white or fresh. <laughs> let me know your vote, and we'll just go with um, whoever votes the most. So we've got white, and we have fresh freesia. You don't need to type the whole fresh freesia. You can just type white or fresh, and I'll know what you mean. So I'm super excited to add my gems to my flower. And I've got one vote. Awesome. Thank you, Patricia. Anyone else want to vote? I've got another vote. I've got another vote. Oh, it's a dead on tie. Oh, wait. Nope. Nope. We got one. Anyone else want to vote? We've got... Um... Okay, I think that's going to... I think Nancy Booth is going to push us over the edge there. And I've got a clear winner, I believe. So we're going to go with the... Uh... <laughs> We're going to go with Fresh Freesia. All right, thanks guys for voting. I appreciate that. Um, so that'll kind of tie in nicely with our designer series paper. But I don't think, I don't think there's a bad choice here. I think they both will look nice. So we're going to take our 
in color jewels. Um, the white does have more contrast. I agree with you, Cheryl. Again, I don't think there's a, a bad choice. You know, that's a little small. Should I do a bigger one? I'm going to do a bigger one. I'm just really in the mood for sparkle today. I need more sparkle than that little one provides. There, that's better. So pretty. Uh, these might have gone on to not orderable status. Um, in fact, I know they went on back order. Um, but they'll be back. Don't worry. I think they'll be back later this month, actually. I'm going to take a glue dot and I'm going to adhere it to my leaf. So I now have, oh, I'm off camera. Sorry. Uh, now I have a sticky leaf right there in the corner. I'm putting it on the front side, which seems a little odd, I know, but that's because um, it's going to tuck behind here. So there we have our little prop for inside our card. Let's put our card together. We're all done. All right, so let's grab the pieces that we did earlier. Um, now, I'm going to step up my adhesive when I attach this panel. This panel um, is going to get kind of pulled a lot, and so I don't want it to fall off. Um, you know, regular adhesive would probably be fine, but whenever I get to use my tear and tape, I go for it because it's awesome. So this is the tear and tape adhesive. Now, keep in mind, you only want adhesive on half of your piece. You want the right side to be loose and free so that that can fold. If you don't and you adhere it flat, it'll just be a regular card, which is fine, but that's not what we're going for. So we're only gonna add adhesive to the left side of this panel. So I'm gonna flip it over. My left side has now become my right side. I have to say that out loud so that my brain accepts it. And this piece is going nowhere. Look at that extra sticky tear and tape. All right, we're just going to pull that backing off. Love my take your pick tool for this sort of thing. There we go. All right, and we're just going to fold our card flat, center this piece, and get it stuck down. There we go. And then we're going to pop this piece up. Oh, we probably should add some words. I completely forgot about the words. Um, we're going to go with, um, hmm, I did thank you on the last one. I think I better go with happy birthday on this one if it fits. Oh yeah, it'll just fit. Can always use a birthday card, right? And we're going to go with, um, we're actually going to go with Highland Heather ink. Are we? Hmm. Let me think about that for a second. All right, which one do we decide on? I think we decided on the Fresh Freezer version, right? So, um, yeah, I'm going to try Highland Heather. Yeah, we'll see what we think. I think either color would have worked for the words. So we're going to stamp it right down here at the bottom. There we go. There's our happy birthday. Look how perfectly that fits. The, the sentiment is, of course, from the pansy. Bonnie agrees with me on my choice. Thank you, Bonnie, for confirming that. Now, again, this was assembled by, um, with the, it's got the adhesive sheets on there, so I'm just peeling that backing off, and everything is now all sticky, which makes it super easy to go on to my card. I'm going to angle that just a little bit so that stem is a little more straight. There we go. And we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of this. Now this one doesn't have to be loose, so we can put dimensionals um, all over the back. Whoops, I got, don't need two sheets of dimensionals. I think one will take care of us. I got nervous because I was down to only four spare packs of dimensionals, so <laughs> I just got ten more in. That would be a really bad thing if I ran out of dimensionals, so. I use them every card, I think. Almost, almost every card. And there, we're going to pop that on there. Oh, look how pretty. Quite a bit bolder than our other one. Super cute. 
All right, we're going to go back to those dimensionals because um, with this particular card, it is critical that you have the inside kickstand part of your easel um, popped up so that it holds the card open. So we're going to put that right inside here. You can kind of just lightly lay it in place and make sure it's uh, going to do the job that, you know, you can shift it around if you want and then just press it when you're happy with the location. So, of course, <clears throat> you know how I roll. I'm going to have to add a ribbon to this card. Going to have to do it. And I think... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, they're right here. They're right in front of my face. Oh, I couldn't find my ribbon for a second. Um, again, I don't think we have a wrong choice here. Fresh freesia would look lovely because of the paper behind, and we have a little fresh freesia in our flower. But I also think um, the Highland Heather ribbon, the new one, would look delightful as well. So we're going to try both because, you know, that's how we roll. And I'm going to say it out loud so I don't forget. Susan, don't forget to show them the new embossing folders. Okay. All right, so there's the fresh freesia. I like that a lot. This one might actually be too thick. So this one is the um, the Highland Heather, uh, what's it called? It's a grow grain ribbon, and it is half inch wide. So it's pretty wide, um, but if you wanted that little more blue tone of, of uh, purple, the freesia is very much a pinkish reddish tone, whereas the, the uh, Highland Heather and the Gorgeous Grape are more in the blue family. I'm trying to tie this too. Thank you, Nancy. I love it too. All right. Gosh, that's not a bad choice either. I thought it would be too wide, but... Um, That's what it looks like. The, the fun thing about the, yeah, it's a little big. I think it's a little too big. But the fun thing about the Highland Heather is it's got a silver thread that runs through it. So it's got a lot of sparkle to it. I'm not sure that that shows up on camera. Let's grab a glue dot. Um, but I feel like it's so wide, it sort of overshadows our flower a little bit. So we're going to um, go back to our fresh freesia, which will pick up the little fresh freesia in the flower and that pretty background paper. I probably could trim that just a bit more. Oh, happiness is sharp ribbon scissors, right? There's no sticky on them. Some of the ones in my, down in my classroom are pretty sticky. All right, Whew. get our little bits off. And there we have two versions of that card. I think this flower would have also been just lovely. Um, as somebody mentioned, there is a lot of uh, contrast between the white and the um, and the Highland Heather. Uh, it is flat on white though, so um, you get a little more pop of color with this one. So not a bad choice. And then again, we've got our little kickstands here. Now this one I used actually just a um, just a rhinestone. Um, I could have colored that with my Fresh Freesia blend if I wanted it Fresh Freesia. And this one I used the In Color Jewels, which have kind of a uh, iridescent coating on the top. So let's look at those embossing folders. Yay, I remembered. <laughs> All right, so the ones we played with, again, just to recap today, we didn't use it, but let's see what this would have looked like. This is the Pretty Petals. back there. It would have been behind here. You can't quite see, but you get the effect. I love our choice. I think the polka dots were adorable. So we talked about the pretty petals. We talked about the checks and dots. Pretty petals, checks and dots. Let's look at the other ones. All right. So one of the new standard size folders, this one is a 3D folder. Um, it's called macrame, I believe. Where is my, yep, macrame. Okay, I'm a child of, well, I was born in the 60s, so grew up in the 70s. Macrame was the thing, and I guess it's coming back. So um, this folder is super cool. Here's what it looks like actually on the paper. Um, it is a 3D folder, so you're going to want the specialty plate or do a shim to get the full, the full texture here. And it reminds me of like a sweater, or um, it's just a really fun... Um, 
nice texture for the background, but it has a kind of a fabric or a knit look to it. So that one is the macrame. These other ones are all the smaller folders, so they work either in the full-size machine or in the mini machine. This first one is called, this next one, the first smaller one is called um, Thanks and Hello. And so this one has thanks and hello in all, all of our, well, a bunch of languages, let's put it that way. Um, so you can see the big thanks here. This is a standard folder, but it embosses very deeply. I mean, I was impressed with how bold these, these words pop out. Um, uh, and with all these words, you don't need a lot else going on in the card, right? You've got... Um, you, you don't want to cover them up, so it would make for a very simple card. And then let's look at the, this is the, so this is the thank you one, and it looks like, or the hello one, excuse me. I need to brush up on my French, bonjour. Um, this is the, the hello one, and this is the thanks version. So let's go on. Okay, this is the last set. Oh, this is my favorite, you guys. My favorite. All right, we're going to just... Uh, think back a few months when uh, here in Minnesota the ground was white um, and it was Christmas time. So here we have the wintry, well it doesn't have to be Christmas, winter. The wintry 3D embossing folders. This is a two-pack. This is our first two-pack of the smaller folders that is a 3D. You are going to want the specialty plate to get the full effect of these folders. Uh, one of them is this Oh, does it have the Welsh thank you on there? Oh, cool. That's nice to know. Um, this is the pine tree. Look at that detail. Oh, it's so gorgeous. My family has a Christmas tree farm, and so I love anything to do with pine trees. Um, and so I was thrilled to get this folder. So you can see how gorgeous that is. I just did it on white. And then the other one that comes in the pack is snowflakes, dancing, swirling snowflakes. Look how stunning when those are embossed. Absolutely love it. As we get later in the year, I'm gonna anticipate that this set of folders is gonna go on back order. So I know it seems weird to be picking them up in the summer, but uh, if you wanna make sure you have them to do your holiday cards, uh, go ahead and pick them up. And you know what? If you do a lot of holiday cards, it's not a bad idea to start early. So um, so those are the embossing folders. There is one other set that was not available when I ordered. It is available now, so that will be coming later, and I can share that on a future video. Thank you so much for joining me today and letting me share this easel uh, fold with you. If you want to catch my next video, make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you'll get notification the next time I go live. I try to go live at 10 a.m. on Saturday mornings, and um, on Tuesdays, I do a live in my Facebook group, and then I upload it to my YouTube channel. So Tuesdays and Saturdays are usually when you can see new content. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm just going to flip the camera so that I can say goodbye. See my messy desk here and my ceiling. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Happy creating.